I have a question before the clock starts ticking. I have a presentation that I would like to sh see, a uh, show actually, but I know that I couldn't see what Carl was showing because the angle of that screen is totally inappropriate, in particular for the people here on my right. So I'm willing to do without the overhead projector, although I know there is one, we have seen one. Uh, keep in mind the table is tilted, and I'll come back to that point. So if you would like me to, uh, to do this after a break, that's fine too, so that you can set up the real screen, but that one doesn't work. Could you let me know how that works out? <laughs> The, the person, uh, the, one of the custodial staff has to do it, and we don't want to be in trouble. But we can try and work on that while other people speak, if you'd like. I, I, I will do without. I will describe. As you know, uh, a picture is worth a thousand words, so I might be a little slower, and but I'll go ahead. I don't want to insert too much of a pause. So I'm Peter Nightingale. I'm with Fossil Free Rhode Island, and I'm a professor of physics at the University of Rhode Island. Um, the first thing that I would like to, to talk about is what I call the natural gas bridge to destruction. Let me give you an idea. We're not talking about an isolated project here. We're talking about a pipeline and a compressor station expansion, the AIM project, Spectras project, there is access northeast that is also coming. There are two frac or there are three, as a matter of fact, fracked gas power plants. God only knows how many will be built. There is the Clear River one, or earlier than that, it doesn't get. Ocean State Power Phase Three, Trans Canada is going to do that or not. Upright Bridge, Massachusetts, EMI Next Gen. Thank you very much. And then there is LNG liquefaction. Uh, that's going to happen in Providence, it's going to happen in Kushnet in Massachusetts. There is going to be a lot of this stuff around at the expense of green energy. Invenergy's uh, Clear River proposal capitalizes on the AIM pipeline expansion. Just last Monday, grass a grassroots coalition filed a lawsuit in D.C. District Court, in the District Court of Appeals, because we were denied the, our intervention. We asked for a rehearing that wasn't granted, and then the thing was thrown out in January, and we we're appealing that. There are serious concerns about the cumulative impact on public health in Rhode Island of all of these projects. We're not talking about one. We're talking about all of them. And last time I checked, pollution did not check to see where there was crossing borders between states or not. So let me give you some simple statistics. Extreme weather 45 years ago happened in 0.3% of, of the earth or 0.3% of the time. Now it happens on 15% of the same. That's an increase over 50 years by a factor of 50. Now that amount of time is roughly the time that this power plant will be here. So whatever criteria you use today to judge whether this thing is justified or not will be obsolete long before this thing is done at the expense, at the expense of human health. Human health is susceptible to pollution spikes. The number of spikes there will be because of increases in humidity and temperature will go up dramatically, exponentially as a matter of fact, and really exponentially in the next 30 to 40 years. The question is, how can the ESS modeling, ESS is a company that did modeling for Invenergy, how can they do any modeling with any value whatsoever if they do this modeling at an average temperature and at an average humidity that wipes out precisely the spikes to which humans are susceptible? The answer we got when we asked this question from the Department of Environmental Management and Health in Rhode Island was silence, nothing. We asked them, when will you give us an answer? Silence. Will you give us an answer? Silence. 
Before the project, the AIM project started, Providence County had an air quality that was below the standard of the Clean Air Act. The noise level of the Spectra compressor station was above the federal limit. Now we're supposed to believe that that will get better by, buying, by building more of this stuff? I don't think so. We asked how this all happened in, with ESS and its modeling, and the answer was once again, silence. I've been authorized by the Rhode Island Association of Conservation Commissions to tell you that all of these questions and issues are strongly supported by them. I would like to end with silence, to honor the people on the front lines of climate change. The people in Burrowville, the people in Fields Point, the people along the pipelines, the people near the wellheads, the people across the globe, and in particular those whose land will be expropriated by cap and trade so that their land can serve as a sponge for industrial countries' greenhouse gas pollutions. During the, during the silence, I got some more, thanks. During the silence, I was about to show two pictures. One is a cartoon that has a chess board on it. The chess board is tilted. On the narrow side are the palms, we the people. On the other side, a little elevated, on some stage you might say, are all the big pieces, the queens, the horses, the knights, the kings. I can't show it to you, but I think I've described it. And there's a last picture that I wanted to show, which has on it a skull murder, a massacre, many skulls, genocide, an incredible number of skulls, and then a number of skulls that can't even be counted, and it's called an investment opportunity. seconds of silence for those on the front lines. Thank you. Thank you. We need to call the next. John, 15, 16, 17, 18. 18.